Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we we'll make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that will drop. Now let's get started. Today we are dealing with pulmonary compliance. Before you get confused, compliance is an English word. Compliance. When you say this person is compliant, it comes from the word comply. Comply with my instruction. Make sure you comply with the other. Do you understand? So to comply means to do what you are supposed to do. There's no stress. You're not stubborn. You easily give in. You are compliant. So that's what this is talking about. Pulmonary compliance. It's still part of the broad topic of pulmonary ventilation. For there to be ventilation, the lungs need to be able to expand. You remember the mechanics of breathing. That's for air to come into the lungs. The pressure out needs to be higher. And to make the pressure higher, this one needs to be lower. And making the pressure in the alveoli or in the lungs lower means that you need to expand the lungs, the volume. Increase in volume leads to what decrease in pressure and all of that. So the lung needs to expand to increase volume. How easily the lungs expands when it is stretched is what compliance is all about. It's no more than that. Okay, so compliance, how do we define it now? Compliance is the measure of the distensibility or stretchability of the lungs. Okay, so look at it now. You can put this in an equation. Pulmonary compliance, let's put it PC. So it is the extent of the change in volume in, as it relates to a change in pressure. Do you understand that now? So it is this over this. Because when air is coming in, okay, you are stretching the lung pressure, you are bringing in air. How much will it expand? How easily will it expand? That's how, that's what it's talking about. How much a lung can expand when pressure or force is applied to it? That's what it means. So there's another term that is different from compliance. It's the opposite, actually, of compliance. It's called elastance. Elastance. Okay. So that one naturally is change in pressure over change in volume. Okay. So you, you just understand that. But this is what we are focusing on compliance how much the volume how much it can stretch how much the volume can change when pressure or force is applied to something so that's what happens in the lungs when the muscles respiratory muscles contract to expand it how easily does the lung expand degree of distensibility or stretchability so it's very very vital that you know that so why this one is a measure of stretchability this is a measure of what rigidity so if the lungs is not very compliant so low compliance is equal to rigidity it's stiff doesn't stretch much so the next logical question you ask yourself what are the things that determine pulmonary compliance most times we usually talk about pulmonary compliance into two aspects okay the lung compliance compliance of the lungs you also have the compliance of the thoracic wall or chest wall okay but but let's let's focus on pulmonary compliance most the, the same principles apply okay the chest wall you know the lungs they are attached to the chest wall in a very special way. 
So the next thing now you are going to ask yourself is what determines pulmonary compliance? There are two major factors and very, very logically, one of them is what? Elasticity. The elasticity of the lungs itself. The lungs, the substance of the lungs is made up of what? Elastic fibers that are made from the protein called elastin. Elastin. So it's just like a rubber band. Okay? The lungs, just like so many rubber bands surrounding the lungs, makes it easily stretch. You know that sometimes when you wear your, a trouser or your skirt that, is, that has elastic waistband, okay? Sometimes after a long time it can become slack. That means it can easily stretch like this, okay? But sometimes when it's very new, it's very strong, it's tight on your waist. When you stretch it, it doesn't easily stretch, okay? So that's the same thing we're talking about here. So it has to do with elasticity. Okay, so, so that's that. So another thing very special that determines pulmonary compliance is known as what? Surfactant. Surfactant. So we're going to be dealing with this later after the break. So elasticity is very, very easy to understand, elastic fibers. So certain disease conditions can make you lose a lot of elastic fiber sometimes naturally old age very old aged people they've lost a lot of elastic fibers so their pulmonary compliance is high it's like that waist band that is now slack and this thing it has expanded and so on such people also have problem with pulmonary ventilation to understand that they have problem with pulmonary ventilation because what makes you to expire is elasticity elastic recoil to go back yes they can easily stretch when you are inspiring they don't, they don't have problem with inspiration but to expire the air for you to go back and really is a problem so the old people people with little elastic fibers usually have problem with what expiration okay then when there is rigidity doesn't stretch much those people have more problem with inspiration a good example on the rigid side is what is known as pulmonary fibrosis fibrosis just like scar wound scar tissue all over the lungs it makes it rigid doesn't stretch much do you understand that now so pulmonary fibrosis makes it rigid so after the break we're going to be dealing with this surfactant very very important Examiners like to ask it a lot in exams. So don't go anywhere after this break. All right, you're welcome back. Now the next, the next determinant of pulmonary compliance is very important, surfactant. What is surfactant? Now look at surface comes from the word surface surface active surfactant okay so now look at what happens look at what happens now in the alveoli of the lungs different alveoli okay the lungs is surrounded that's what makes up a lot of the substance of the lungs a lot of about 300 million out your line the lungs now these lungs they are made up of two types of cells type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes okay pneumocytes pneumocytes so the type 2 type 2 pneumocyte hmm? pneumocyte 2 they secrete surfactant so what is surfactant now let me explain it with this water and air they don't easily mix together okay so water molecules when they are surrounded by air 
they it's like they are repelling each other so water molecules they want to shrink and go away from the air okay so they shrink and they cling more to themselves in trying to run away from the air i'm putting it in lay terms okay so by so doing they develop a tension at the surface at that water air junction interface that is known as surface tension surface tension so there is a surface tension that is developed at the water air interface now you go to this alveoli this alveoli there's air in it and also there's also water lining there's water everywhere in the body there's a thin layer of water lining the surface so ordinarily because of this surface tension it makes this alveoli they are like sacs they are alveolar sacs just like small small balloons they will collapse do you understand it will make it collapse surface tension is happening at the alveoli that will easily make the alveolar sacs to collapse and because the lungs is made up of so many of those tiny balloons when they collapse air they cannot easily open up you know when air enters into it you're supposed to be filled with air but they are collapsed when they are collapsed it makes it difficult for them to fill with air and it makes it difficult for the lungs to expand because it is air that is stretching expanding the lungs okay part of what is filling up so when the air the, the lungs is not being able to be filled with air it cannot expand that's where this one comes into pulmonary compliance so they play they play roles know the elasticity of it and then these balloons alveolar sacs when the surface tension is high it makes them collapse makes them not easily to open up but there's a solution and the solution is surfactant so type 2 pneumocyte they secrete a substance that now coats the surface of this alveoli and makes it easily and then by so doing it reduces the surface tension that will not make it to easily open up so it doesn't collapse easily because of surfactant the surfactant note that it's released by type 2 pneumocytes in the alveoli and they reduce surface tension surface tension which is responsible for the collapse of the alveolar sacs that's what you need to know about this so what happens is that right from the womb from around six months when a baby is in the womb six months that's when this pneumocyte starts producing surfactant you understand that now that's why premature infants a baby that's born prematurely they don't have enough surfactant so they have difficulty in breathing because there's difficulty in expanding the lungs so premature infant they have what is known as irds infant respiratory distress syndrome they like to ask it they can just give you a short note on infant that's this is the cause okay and you can the solution of course let's let's not talk about that okay so this this what happens so what are the components the composition of surfactant the details are in the books but what you should never forget is that up to 60 to 70 to 80 percent sometimes up to 80 percent of surfactant is made up of what is known as d p p c di palmitoy now palmitoy fus fa ti di colin d p p c that's what makes up a lot of this surfactant that we are talking about and other substances phospholipids 
proteins, carbohydrates, neutral lipids, and so on. So the details are in the books. So this is what determines pulmonary compliance. The details are in the books. But this is the basic must know knowledge. It's the basic thing you must know about it. Elasticity, elastic fibers, and surfactant. All right, so I'm gonna see you in the next video.